One of the earliest churches in Calcutta is St John's Church. It was built very quickly in 1847 from stone which was taken from a ruined city called Gauda to the north. Um, one of the reasons for its rather hasty building was that Warren Hastings, who was the governor of Calcutta at the time, um, had a mistress who he met on a ship <laughs> between Britain and England, uh, between Britain and India, a baroness from Germany. Um, and uh, having paid off her husband, who was seemingly in agreement with his relationship with the Baroness. Uh, it took a long time for her divorce to come through, but anyway, when it did come through, Warren Hastings and the Baroness, he wanted to get married very, very quickly, and, uh, because uh, his relationship with her was a bit of a scandal. <laughs> and I think he was the first person to get married in the church. It was in fact at that time a cathedral, but that was transferred eventually to St Paul's Cathedral a bit later on. But it's an interesting building to go and visit. We have come to St John's Church in Calcutta. It's just striking 11 o'clock. Monument to the Black Hall of Calcutta. You see, we've seen where the site of the Black Hall of Calcutta is, but it's now a, a post office building. There's no evidence of the uh, black hole at all, or indeed Fort William, where the uh, where the black hole was. It's all all gone. St John's Church in Calcutta. This chap, Warren Hastings, who was the uh, the Governor General of India was not very popular back in England. I think he regarded India as his personal fiefdom. And uh, complaints were made about him. Uh, and the government discussed these complaints and decided to, uh, to teach him a lesson. Uh, it was subsequently discovered, I think after his death, but the complaints were not justified and his reputation was restored. But uh, too late for him, unfortunately. The East India Company, which ran uh, India by proxy for the British government, they had their own army, they had their own uh, civil service, and uh, their own merchants. And uh, it was a very bachelor-dominated organisation. And there were two ships sailed between India and England carrying women of a certain age looking for a husband, preferably rich, maybe influential, preferably aristocracy with uh, certainly big reputations in the United Kingdom or in England. And uh, a book has recently been written about them. Uh, they travelled round from garrison to garrison uh, looking for a husband. They were here for a couple of years and a woman's been writing books about the influence of women on the empire and this one, one of the books to do with India is called The Fishing Trip. It had nothing to do with fishing for fish. It was a case of women fishing for husbands. Uh, so they, they came out here for a couple of years, travelled around trying to find a husband in the various garrisons around India. It must have been horrendous. Um, because these garrisons were widely spaced. I mean, India was enormous, an enormous place. It was hot. In the summertime, it was absolutely stifling. Uh, and of course, some of the women didn't find a husband. And so they came back on the other ship, which rather cruelly was called Returning Empty. <laughs> a great shame. Not very good for your reputation. So this is the church of St John. This is where all the mighty of Calcutta were married at their children's prison where their funerals were held. It's the earliest English church in, in India, I think. That 
now it's uh, I mean, it's being restored, so it's uh, in uh, it's in pretty good condition. Well, how how well used it is, I have no idea. Inside the church, it's full of memorials to the great and good of the time. One or two of them very interesting. One of them's to a man called James Pattle. What an interesting, interesting history. He was a, an incorrigible liar. And uh, quite a wicked sort of person, he's described as. Um, and he left instructions that when he died, his body would be pickled in rum, shoved in a coffin, and sent back to England to be buried. Here it was. The body was duly pickled, shoved in a coffin, and it was put into his wife's cabin when the sh ship set sail from Kolkata. Anyway, it hadn't gone very far when the blooming coffin broke apart and Pottle's body sat and bowled upright, <laughs> giving, his, giving his wife a heart attack from which she died. So now there was two of them, so they were both <laughs> pickled in rum, stuffed in the coffin, and uh, and the boat set sail. But of course they, and the smell of this rum was, was too much for the, the sailors apparently. This is how the story goes. And they drilled a hole in the coffins, drained the rum out and drank it. And being absolutely paralytic, the ship was out of control and, and ran onto a sandbank where it blew up, cremating Pattle and his wife. It's a real, a real tall story, but that's that's what I what I read. So anyway, his uh, his memorial, or him and his wife, but perhaps their memorial is on the south side of the church, and in one corner of the. Uh, the churchyard. There's also a memorial to some grand dam of, of Calcutta who had four husbands and goodness knows how many children. It's, a, it's an interesting visit. The church is full of the church is full of memorials of the great and good who came out to India. I suspect many of them were second sons and lower. The first son obviously would inherit the estate. This lad. William Butterworth Bailey, he came from Hope Hall near Eccles, Lancashire. I wonder if it's still there. <clears throat> he lived quite a long time. So the reason they came out was to make their fortune. They'd heard, of course, and, and rightly so, that people who came out to India, the British who came out to India, had huge houses. And, uh, and massive numbers of servants to attend to their needs. Um, whereas, if you were a second son or, or, or beyond, uh, third son, fourth son, fifth son, you name it, you were scratching around in England trying to make a way for, your, for yourself, particularly if you, if you didn't have inherited any money. So the attraction was great to come from England to uh, India. But they didn't realize the problems when they got here. Life-threatening diseases and uh, appalling water supply. Temperatures absolutely through the roof. And of course, they, being English, stiff up a lip. They, uh, the 
used to wear their suits and ties, and, and the England women used to dress in uh, sort of long dresses. So they carried on their English way of life out here. Didn't adapt at all to the uh, to the local custom, or indeed the local food. So whilst it was a luxurious lifestyle while you were here, for the many of them, it was incredibly short. But for those who uh, who made their fortunes and went back to England, they were, they could the fortunes were huge, and they could buy up massive properties and estates, big houses in London. They were very much envied. They were regarded as a bit too ostentatious, a bit over the top, uh, flaunting their wealth, which um, amongst the upper echelons of British society did not go down well. Even today, talking about money is very, very much frowned upon in certain elements of society. It's a lovely building. There's only one piece of stained glass, that window at the far end. The rest is plain glass, so you get nice light. And I suspect these plaques along the wall are regimental coats of arms. This is very typical of the uh, of many of the memorials in the church and around. But this one is perhaps a little more relevant in that um, he was killed during the relief of Lucknow, a residency when uh, which we went to see three days ago. Only 21. This is the earliest graveyard of the British in India. Uh, just up inside the main yard of St John's Church. And what strikes you in all of these places is just how young these people were when they died. They just weren't cut out for the Indian way of life the heat and the diseases, poor water supply, lack of sewage. And every graveyard you go into, even up in Uti and Shimla and places like that, up in the mountains, where you'd have expected them to survive longer, they all died incredibly young. And these young army officers, they uh, Enormous responsibility thrown onto their shoulders when they were young. I mean, this guy was 20, 22. And this memorial in the churchyard is typical in that officers were recognised, but the non commissioned officers and privates were not recognised at all. Well, they were recognised, but they weren't named. Stuck away in, uh, in the corner of the uh, churchyard is a memorial to the people who were killed in the Black Hole of Calcutta incident. Fort William was the fort built to defend Calcutta, um, but it was captured in 1756 by Indian forces. And uh, there was a small dungeon in the grounds, which was which had been built to accommodate about six prisoners. But the British prisoners of war, the, the British who were captured during the capture of the fort, were stuffed into this dungeon. Uh, the number is unknown. There's been a, conflict about the actual numbers. Nevertheless, there were many, many more than, uh, than the dungeon was built to accommodate. There were
we're all just jammed in. And the heat, the lack of water, and the whole panic in the whole place. When it was up at the following morning, there were only 23 survivors. A large number of, of them had died. And it became known as the Black Hole of Calcutta. Um, revenge came with Robert Clive's victory at the Battle of Plessy in 1757, uh, when no quarters were, were given. Right. A memorial was erected to the people who were killed in this dungeon, on the actual site of the dungeon. It was rebuilt in 1901 by Lord Curzon, who I think was also the Governor General of India. Um, and it was built in the, uh, the garden of the, the Writers' Building. However, in 1940, it was moved to this place in the grounds of St John's Church, where it remains to this day. In the corner of St John's Church Yard is this monument to those who perished in the what was called the Black Hole of Calcutta when following the, the defeat of the British in a little skirmish 123 were put into what was a prison cell sort of half under the ground and uh, lots and lots of them died I think there was only something like 29 managed to escape down a a sewage outlet right up towards the river. Anyway, it's been moved about since, uh, as it says on the monument, and it's ended up in this rather scruffy, scruffy corner of the churchyard of St John's. St John's Church in Calcutta, when it was the capital of, of India, was the place. This is where all the, the top British were married, had their children christened, and had their funerals and so on. This tells us a little bit about the Black Hole of Calcutta Monument and how it came to be here. It isn't the original monument.